Rick Neuheisel will be presenting a new award, the Comeback Coach of the Year Award. And it's it's interesting because I think the recipients are all uh, viable candidates, but not all of it is like their personal comeback. It's more maybe it's like surprise team of the year for a couple of them or just a way to give an award to a really good coach who won't win coach of the year award. Rick Neuheisel, CBS Sports College Football Analyst, joins us on CBS Sports Radio. It, like a lot of this, like that, there's no personal comeback for Nick Saban or for P.J. Fleck. It's more what they've done with their programs, right? Well, you're exactly right. Uh, it's it, it could be dubbed the fire extinguisher award because all <laughs> these guys were squarely on the hot seat. Uh, Mike McIntyre at Colorado had yep. won two conference games in three previous seasons as the head coach at Colorado. Chris Creighton took over an Eastern Michigan program that uh, you know the faculty was trying to get rid of. And Paul Petrino and his Idaho Vandals are, are being uh, cast off to the FCS in a year's time. They've been banished from the Sun, uh, the Sun Belt Conference. So all three of these guys had huge mountains to climb, but they found a way. And uh, just great coaching jobs by all three of them. You mentioned Colorado. Um, it's, it's been a long time coming to turn around a program that you saw at much higher peaks than, it's, uh, than it is now. How sustainable is what Mike McIntyre's done? Well, it's sustainable because they finally built the physical plant to match all the others uh, that they have to recruit against. They've got a indoor facility now. Uh, they've got uh, all the bells and whistles, Doug, that you know all programs need in a 48-hour visit to show commitment to the program to anybody who's taken time to visit and, re and, and uh, really uh, looking inside the behind the curtain, if you will. So when you do that, especially in a state like Colorado, where you're probably going to get five or six big-time recruits on an annual basis, for kids from Texas and kids from California coming to see, they have to see that they get, you have that kind of commitment, and now they do. That, coupled with the recent success, people are going to be fired up about being a Buffalo. And and Coach Max staying, too, also helps. It's when, when you exactly. have that coaching turnover, exactly. that, that's what re really kills you. Uh, Rick Neuheisel joining us, CBS Sports uh, College Football Analyst. Speaking of Washington, another place that you coached, uh, this is a place that's also reaping the benefits. Uh, when Sark was there, they went through this massive redo of, of the stadium, but they also changed the football complex. They finally put some money into football, a bunch of money into football. Is that why they're here? Is Chris Peterson why they're here? Is Sarkeesian's recruiting why they're here? Why are they in the college football playoff? I think all of the above. I think all of that plays into it. Uh, there were certainly pieces uh, there when uh, Chris Peterson arrived on the scene. Uh, couple that with his kind of modus operandi. Uh, he brought a bunch of his staff mates from uh, Boise with him. They do things in a in a uh, in their way. I think they call their recruits our kind of guys. Yeah. Uh, and they basically transformed the culture that was there that might have been seemingly a little loose for their standards uh, into some you know hard nosed football players. Uh, and they got uh, they hit big time on guys like Jake Browning, who's just a true sophomore, and Miles Gaskin, also a true sophomore at quarterback and running back, respectively. Both those guys have been big time performers from the from the start. So uh, all that has played into it. Washington, having coached there, the fan base is there. They they're yeah. desperate for championship level play. Don James built that program. Uh, uh, and, and, and got great things. Jim Owens before him. There were some great, great passionate fans up there for the Huskies, and certainly Chris Peterson has rekindled that. So this is an exciting time up there in the Puget Sound. All right, so they're taking on Alabama. They're going down to Atlanta. It's going to be at Georgia, the Georgia Dome. Peach Bowl uh, is the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl the site of one college football playoff semifinal. Rick Neuheisel, CBS college football analyst, joining us on CBS Sports Radio. Um, so part of us says, you know, the, the – the part of it says, look, Alabama's better. Um, Nick Saban, that time to prepare. Uh, you got a, a, though a talented quarterback, still a younger quarterback in Browning, a sophomore, true sophomore, in the type of exotic blitzes and looks he's going to see. And that defense has been dynamic in scoring points uh, to allow the offense plenty of leeway with their own youth at quarterback. Th this is a, a talent mismatch. But then the other part of it says, hold on now, Chris Peterson, we've seen this before. Uh, noticeable underdog in a huge game against a sizable favorite that we think is better at so many positions in terms of NFL upside. How do you see the Washington-Alabama game? 
Well, it's it's an interesting game because I think you're right. It's just easy to say Alabama is dominant, especially on that defensive side of the ball. And and uh, given the length of a football game, 60 minutes, and all, it's just too hard to sustain anything against those guys. You know, four times this year had Alabama had their offense just stay on the bus, they still win the game because their defense outscored the opponent offense. So that's an easy take. But I don't think we have had a coach in uh, at least the modern era that has better gotten David ready to play Goliath than Chris Peterson. You know, his Boise State Broncos took on all comers and, and, and made you know, us all remember games against Oklahoma where Jared Zabransky hits the, the hitch and pitch to get him into the overtime. Then they have the Statue of Liberty to win the game. Sure. And they're proposing on the sideline. I mean, it, it, it's it's an unbelievable uh, uh, attack that Peterson has in store. I don't know that the entire attack works against Alabama. I think they're going to have to be boring by their own standards and just hit the short pass and let Jake Browning be surgical, if you will, if he's capable of doing that. It, and I think that's their best way because no one's been able to run the ball against Alabama. It would be amazing to see somebody find a way to crack that code. All right, so why did they get so embarrassed? Why did Washington get so embarrassed by USC? What happened? Well, they moved Browning off the spot, and I, and I think uh, it was the first time that their offensive line got pushed around. Uh, and, and also, Sam Darnold, the quarterback for USC, is really, really talented. Uh, he had a big game. So uh, I, I think that uh, that was an off night for the Huskies. They're going to have to be spot on. They're going to have to play terrific football. But I do believe Browning is capable of that. And there's guys like John Ross and Dante Pettis and Miles Gaskin that can make plays in space. If they can uh, muster up some field position, not turn the ball over, I think they can make this a very competitive game. 